Hey you guys, it's Cami with your interchangeable truck video. I'm excited about this one. I'm gonna be painting this one two colors on either side. <clears throat> and that's, this one's gonna be for me. So I'm gonna be doing a blue on one side that will match kind of my summer colors. And I'm gonna do like a green on the other side to match fall and winter colors. So you can do one color, you can do two colors, you can do what you want. But let me show you the pieces real quick. So you've got a four layer truck and it'll come like this. Um, who knows what happens in shipping, but you've got two solid sides and on the inside you've got these. And they look like this just to save wood, save cost for all of us. And this is how it will go together. And that's how you'll glue it, okay? So when the time comes, you'll glue it like that. Do not do any painting to these inner pieces. Don't, don't waste your paint. So that's how those will go together. Now, you also have hubcaps. And what, what I call like the bigger one, this one right here goes in the front. The smaller, shorter one goes in the back. And you will see that they have been fit onto the body. So this one fits right onto the design. So see how that shape fits right there? That's how you know that you've got the right ones. But I've also scored the wheel well to help you paint. So I'll show you that. We've got rear view mirrors. You can use those or don't use them. That's up to you. I thought it was a cute little added touch. You've got your rails. And I'll show you how these glue on the back, just like this. And then you've got these extra pieces here that have the hole in them that will glue right on top if you choose to use them for the interchangeable part. And it just goes right on top of that section of the rail, okay? Um, let me get this other piece. Oh. So nothing too fancy. They just go right on top like that, okay? All right. And then there are, you've got two options for your wheels. They look like this. Okay, so you can use the white wall part or not use it. That's up to you. So if you leave it out, it would look like that. If you put it in, you would use that. So that's a choice you can make. And then of course you've got your ladder. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna first paint and I'm gonna do a little focused view Probably put some music in the video. You don't need to listen to me too much, but I'll do a little bit of talking about um, stains. I've got a really dirty plate here. I use the same one, and then whatever's left over, I let it sit out and dry so that I can put it on top again. And what I'm gonna do, I will do the green side first, I think. And I'm just getting really wet. This red is dry. That green looks a little wet from yesterday, but the red is leftover. This is the green that I'm going to use. Getting a really wet brush. And see how I'm just pulling out a puddle? And that's how I'm going to... And I'm going to move kind of fast. This is Colonial Verdigris. It's a darker green. I was going for a color that would work with fall, be a little old looking. I don't have to be too perfect right here because the hub cap, oh, not the hub, the fender will go on top of that edge. But anyway, I like this green because it's a little darker. It's a little darker than what the camera is actually showing. I'm dipping into my water again and just, I pulled some paint from that puddle I made. 
If you use paint, you don't have to quite move quite as fast. Uh, the reason I'm moving fast with stain is because the stain soaks into the wood. And if you leave a line, like if I were to leave this like this and walk away, it's going to leave a line that you can't unsee, for lack of a better way to say that. If it dries looking like that, even with a second coat, you're gonna see how that dried. So I try to move a little bit fast with a wet brush and you can see I was able to cover that because I moved sort of quick, sort of quick. Now, when I cut, I'm gonna act like you're new to my kits. So when I cut the kits, I do not mask the wood some, some kit makers do, I don't. And what happens is you get these burn marks on it. And I don't mask because I encourage using stain. And when you do that, you get these really nice accents on your piece without doing anything. It's just natural. If you don't like that, you can easily sand them off. You could use a um, baby wipe to wipe them down a little bit. But a sanding block works really good. I'm not worried too much about right there because I know that the fender, that front fender is gonna cover how that covers that. It's good to know what the design looks like. I know because I designed it, but definitely lay out your designs before you start painting and you'll always have a picture. Just make sure you're looking. Okay, I think that looks good. All right, so I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna do the other side in the color under C, which is this color. Just rinse my brush. I'm gonna do the same thing. Oh, I should have, mm, I'll go back and do my fenders. That's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and, again, I create a puddle right off the side and work from that puddle. This undersea is a good coastal color. Undersea is a custom stain I have made it's not a regular stain, so it can tend to be a little bit thicker due to the formulation of it. So you may need a little more water. To get a very like thin down stain look. So again, I'm just kind of moving fast. I dip my brush in water. I create a little puddle. Oop. Picked up a little extra stain there, but that's okay. And do the back part. And again, I like to let the burn part show through, some of the wood to show through. And I don't do the edges. I even will go back like this and wipe, make sure I didn't get any on the edge. But that doesn't mean you can't if you are painting it. A lot of people that paint them like to do the edges. All right, so these are my two colors. Wildly different, but they'll be on either side. And I'm gonna put it on my mantle so you won't see them together. So, but I think it'll be fun because it'll give me two color choices to do. Now I'm gonna do my fenders, but I need to make sure I get the right fenders. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and place them on. 
I'm gonna make sure they fit, they do. And now I'll go ahead and paint the fenders. I mean, I guess you could paint fenders a different color. You can do whatever you want with your truck. That's the beauty. You could even um, like sand the edges of these and round them a lot before you paint or stain. I'm gonna do some sanding after, I'll show you that. But I am gonna stain first. So I got a little excess stain on that. I'm just dipping in water and taking the excess off. And I'll show you the difference. See how much brighter this one is than this one? It's not that big of a deal, but I'm looking for a certain tone. So I'm just gonna wipe the excess off before it dries on there. Well, and that really gets me much closer. And I'm just gonna rinse out my brush and just make sure this is even. The beauty of stain is it's so easy to move around. And ignore my nails. I've got paint pour paint under my nails. <laughs> they finally started growing back after a year of being ruined. Okay, so I'm gonna set these aside, set this aside to dry, and then I know that these need to be green now. So let me rinse this and I'll do these green. Sometimes there's a little ash from the cutting on them, you can wipe it off. So I tend to go with a very light stain. My advice, if you're new to it, each one of those pieces we just did has a back that you're never gonna see. Practice on that. Practice and decide what you like. Some people like a very heavy stain color. My thoughts with a lighter coat is that you can do a second coat on top once this dries to get a heavier coat. And I think it's easier that way. But that's just a choice. Okay, now I'm gonna do, while I've got dealing with these colors, I'm gonna do the um, mirrors. These are the mirrors. Now, you're gonna get a sanding block. Mine's been used, yours is gonna be new. And because you get a lot of burn, see the burn on those? On the back, so on the front there's gonna be a line. See that line scored on there? This is the back. I want you to sand the back. And I just do it like this. Because you're gonna see the top part of this from the other side. I'll show you when I'm done. Okay, so this has been sanded and this one needs to be sanded. See the difference? See how easy that is to get that burn stuff off? Now you could leave the burn on but because this piece is so small, it's a little extra burn in this spot, more than like the normal shading burn. The back sides of the pieces get a little extra flare back from the laser. So I like to clean them off a little bit when they show. Okay, so that's what you're gonna do. Now, here's what you've got to think about. One of these is gonna go on the green side and one of these is gonna go on the blue side, okay? You're gonna paint on the front and again, the front has the score mark. That's the front in my, my view. You're gonna paint one green and one blue. And then on the back, after these dry, you're gonna fit, flip them over and paint the opposite color. 
because that's what you're going to see. And I'll show you. But let's just do the one sides for now. And then I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I'm going to do blue on one. And I'm actually, I'm, I'm going to do the whole thing when I think about how. So blue on one. I'm just rinsing. And then green on the other. When you make your little water thing that you want to rinse out, do put, don't put just a little bit of water because you need it to be able to dilute for a while unless you want to keep changing your water. So like this is half, half full. Okay, so take green on one, blue on the other. And we'll let those dry for a second before we flip them over and show you. So now I'm going to move on to the rails and the first thing I'm going to do on the rails is on the inside of the rails I'm going to do a little sanding again not a lot just a little bit if you have um asthma or anything and you worry about sanding and you've got like one of your COVID masks you could put that on there may be a little bit of sanding dust I didn't do a lot just a little bit so just a little bit and I'm gonna do, I've used Early American, and I'm gonna just paint the, I'll be doing both sides, but right now I'm just gonna do the outside first. And again, I make a puddle. That's how I do it every time. I don't go right into the center. I just keep building these puddles that I use. And then I go back into that puddle until that puddle runs out and then I make another puddle. What I love about Early American is you can, and mostly most any brown stain, you can just go straight over these score marks on the rails. and you'll see the score marks. You don't have to worry about not seeing the detail of the design and trying to paint in between those lines. You're gonna just paint over the whole thing. It's gonna make it super simple. I'm gonna let those dry for just a little bit. And while they're drying, I'm gonna do the four add-on pieces. You don't have to sand the back of these because you won't see it. So I'm just gonna do a quick. And these have holes to add your hangers and I'll talk about those in just a second. Just quick, quick thing. Now, you have two kinds of hangers. I, on the original sample, just glued in the one kind. Um, this is one kind. It's like a loop that you could tie things into. And here's a different kind. It's just like an L. And the way they will work is this piece will be glued onto the front of the rail like that and these will go in just like that and anything that's in your designs or if your design doesn't have something sometimes the design like the peaches and that sort of thing i've included your truck comes with a ladder the interchangeable 
assumes you're going to use the ladder, right? And so you will just hook that right onto that piece, right? Now you can glue these in and either one of them will work for all the interchangeables because you could, like if you've got ice skates, you'll see that on the ice skates, I tied them through this loop on my picture, but you could just hang them over the L. It doesn't matter. The loop is gonna prevent things from falling if you move it because it's closed, right? This is more open, um, but this is a little harder to tie them through. This is easier to hang them on. So it really just depends on what you're comfortable with. Um, this loop can still hold the ladder. Doesn't stick out as much, but it does hang on there. So it's really a choice. You also could not glue them in. They work just fine and just leave them and you could keep and interchange whichever one you want to use. So that it, it's definitely a choice. I ended up gluing these in because I was doing so many photos. I was driving myself crazy, crazy, trying to take them in and out and in and out. But I'm actually on this one, I'm not gonna glue them in because this is my personal one. And I'm going to stain both sides of these the same brown. I'm just doing both sides right now at the same time and standing them up to dry. It's not a lot of color. It's just a little bit of color. It's already brown. But I don't necessarily need the these hangers to stand out necessarily. I just want them to be hangers. Could have sanded the back of these. I'm not sure you can see it too much given the color I'm using. Okay. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead while that's drying and I'm gonna do the wheel wells in black. So this is, they're not the wheel wells, they're kind of the wheels, right? but I've given you a place to paint. So stay within that line and I'm just gonna do the same thing. You could do any color or tire you want, I guess. And I know that it's going outside of the tire. You won't see that. I just gave you a controlled space to put your color but remember the fender is going to go on top. So the part that is outside of the round shape of a tire, you're not going to see that part. Now I'm doing my black kind of thin. I like to see the wood. I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to make it look like it's not wood. And these tires have a little bit of burn mark at the bottom. And so when I do the black stain thinner, I can see that brown. So I'll show you in just a second. See, it's a little bit brown at the bottom there. And that's just the burn coming through. And you'll even see that I wasn't perfectly right up to the edge. That's okay. Again, you're not going to see that. So I'll do the blue side with a wet brush. It really does help the stain. Move. If you're staining and you find that your brush is just having a hard time moving, Ask yourself if it's a dry brush. The formulation of stain that if you got it from me, it's very paint like sometimes, so it needs to be thinned down. I 
you don't have stain, but you want the same look from paint, you could try it with paint. Just water your paint down. Okay, I'm gonna let those dry. And then I am gonna do um, white walls on the blue side of my truck and just plain, no white walls, just hubcaps on the green side. All right, and I'm dipping into my white stain. White has a tendency to require a couple coats and I'm just holding it up because, well, old eyes. That's just a small place. Um, I don't try to get full white coverage in one coat. I No matter what you do, if, if you try to do that, it gets too, too thick. It, it doesn't really work. So just go ahead and put a thin coat on. Don't try. I'm, see, the light is deceptive right there. there. That's a better look. It's not, it's, the sun is coming through my window. It's making it look white. It's not. Okay, and I'm going to do weathered fence for the inside of, for my hubcaps. I'm using terms I'm not familiar with. Okay. Those are orders. I've been backing up orders. Okay, so just a little weathered fence right here in the center. This is one of my favorite grays. The less you do of weathered fence, it will pull a little more brown from the wood color. And the more you do the more gray it'll look. So it really just depends on how light you do it. I tend to go pretty light. All right. I don't know if you can see how not white that is, but it's not white. But it's had enough time to dry. I'm gonna try a smaller brush. I just started my camera. I'm not really sure where the last video ended. So I will figure that out and add some notes in your written instructions. Sorry about that. Okay, let's build a truck. So you've got two inserts in the inside. Let's start with those. I'm using this paint pot of glue. Use any glue that you want. I'm actually going to use my brush to glue. Uh, this pot came with a glue applicator, but uh, I did not grab it, so that's okay. Uh, I'm using Tight Bond Quick and Thick. Use any glue that's good for wood glue. I don't recommend something that is gonna dry immediately like, um, um, gosh, I can't even think of the names, but nothing that has like an immediate dry. You wanna give yourself a little bit of time to assemble, but you also don't want it to require like two hours to dry because then it could slide. So I do like the tight bond quick and thick because it's very strong, but it also, it gives me a few minutes to get it where I want it. But then it is pretty, pretty quick. So what I'm doing is I'm squeezing really hard. And when I do that, it tends to shimmy a little bit. That's okay. Let it do that. Okay. 
really trying to get good adhesion. And then once I get good adhesion, then I'm gonna use the table and use my fingers around the edges to make sure that these are lining up. You're gonna take your time with this. Cause this is, you know, this is a forever piece because it's interchangeable. The glue is, the type on glue is um, clear when it dries, but any kind of excess like that on the bottom, I'm gonna wipe with my hand. I could sand it afterwards if I wanted to. Anything on the inside, I'm not too worried about. And I know this looks like I'm taking forever, but I just really wanna make sure I'm giving this centerpiece enough time to be together. So now I'm gonna put on a side and just put your glue on this center piece. When I did that, I could see this. That's why you keep checking. If you do all this good work and you know you're sure that you had it lined up because they they are cut off the same design so they they do fit together perfectly but let's say you know something shifts on you look it happens to me it happens to all of us then what you can do is you can do a little sanding but then you can also stain the edges or paint the edges and you'd never really see that they're not quite aligned. So that, that's an option. Okay, so put the glue down and then I'm gonna go ahead and put this on. I have, uh, not in reach, but I took an old brick. We had it in the shop. It was a brick that was in the shop that we don't know why it was in the shop, but it was probably part of the walls at some point. And we wrapped it in old canvas. You've probably seen me use it. It's heavy and it's great. Actually, I'll grab it because I can see it. Hang on. It's a canvas brick, canvas covered brick. And it's great for projects like this because of this. So now that I've gotten it to this place, it's still very wet, right? But I can do this for just a few seconds. It's gonna apply even pressure and I can still go around using my hands. I can make sure that I can feel it. Another thing you can do to make sure things are even are things like this. Like you can use this piece as a straight edge, you know, other pieces. If, and sometimes with like the weather and stuff, the wood may want to warp a little bit. Um, if you're seeing that it's wanting to warp after you put the glue on it, just go ahead and I'm going to finish this up. I'm going to set it aside and I'm going to put that brick on it. And then that brick's going to keep it from warping. 
and we're just going to give it a minute and it's going to come together just fine. my dog. Okay, they've been very good throughout this whole video. They were napping. Alright, so. And you may wonder, why am I using my good brush for this glue? It's water-based glue. Or else wash it out. It'll be fine. Just don't let it dry in the brush. You'll be fine. to go put it in lots of different positions. And see, it's already standing on its own, right? So that's the blue side, that's the green side. stuff on my board that has, I just have to be careful not to, I have to find a flat spot when I do this. And I'm really just squeezing the edges, which is where those inserts are. see it from both sides. Okay. Okay, and I'm going to set this aside and I'm going to put my, well, as soon as I did, I'm going to show you. As soon as I did that, you see that? That's a sign it's not even. I could see that once I moved it. but it looks even on the top, so that's where it's hard. Just keep, and if you've got to pry a piece off, do it. Do it before it gets really stuck, you can do that. There we go. And focus on the top. That's what you're going to see. Okay, that's going to dry. Now, let's put our rails together. And there are um, the, uh, the little eye on the wood is not necessarily aligned to this piece. I don't know what I was thinking, but that's okay. Just don't look at the design, just put them on. You put them on in any direction you want. So I'm gonna, just don't put any glue where the hole is. Now, if you're gonna use your, oops, there is one that has the eye on it and one that doesn't. Uh, you can put it together any way you want. I just wanted to acknowledge that. My original design only puts one eye on each side like that. You can put both on. 
one side if you want. Um, so you have the two hangers. If you're going to be, depending on where you place it, you might could permanently attach both hangers, one on each side. And even though the hangers are different, it would give you a permanent hanging solution on both sides that you wouldn't have to worry about transporting when you flip colors, if you flip colors. Um, and I may do that so that I can show you that. So I'll let you see that. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and put in my hangers. So I'm just going to put the glue right on the base of the hanger. And I like my loops to the holes to go like um, horizontal holes. Yeah, not vertical holes. Again, this is your truck. You can do as you see fit. And I am pushing them down so they're touching that base rail. And yes, there's a little glue oozing, but I'm not gonna worry about that because mine's gonna dry clear. I just want them to have a good solid attachment because I'm gonna be manipulating them quite a bit. It wouldn't be a live of, or a video of mine if it wasn't a dog barking. Right? And then that's what those will look like. So let's let that glue dry. Okay, we're down to the last little bit. Not too bad. All right, we're gonna put on our details. So let's put on the blue hubcaps. I'm gonna make sure I got the right ones. Oh, yeah, see? Make sure you got the right ones. <laughs> and again, feel them in position. It's like my green piece, I shifted a little, but that's actually pretty good because I can show you how I'll fix that. It's always good for me to have a mistake happen so I can give you some fix tips. And then I wanted to do the white walls on the blue side. So I'm gonna do white walls and just center them in this space. Cute. Cute. All right, and then I'm gonna put my mirror on. Little dog hair. And you'll see, I line mine right up to that line. And you'll see, see how you see the green from the other side? Okay, so now I'm gonna flip it and I'm gonna put on my green hubcaps. Shh, I'm gonna line these up again. One tip about if you use a glue pot like this, get your brush wet every now and then. This glue can be thick. And then on this 
this side, I'm just doing the hubcaps. There's no white walls on this side. For a little variety. And again, you just center that. Use your eyeball. If you, uh, there are people that get very OCD about it and that's okay. Just get out a ruler. I just put it in the middle. And then I'm going to do my green. Cute. All right, now let's put on our rails and I'll show you how the rails go. So the rails, you're going to attach the rails here, 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 and here. And you're just gonna put a little bit of glue and the glue, wood glue is stronger than wood sometimes. So you're gonna put it on, you're gonna let it cure for 24 to 48 hours, okay? Don't be playing with it like crazy. Let it do its magic and don't be cheap. I'll show you what I'm doing. Go ahead and give yourself, it may ooze a little, but, okay, see, here, here, four places it's going to attach, and I'm going to attach them here, here and here and here, okay? I'll show you, Let's see if I can do it reverse. It'll go right like this, to where these two are attached, not this. You could attach that if you feel more comfortable, but it's not necessary, and these two. So there can be a space between this and this, okay? So I'm, I, it's easier if I do it down. So let me do this. And then you're going to line it up to the back of the truck. I'm going to give that just a second. And I'll show you. So there's a good space. I do have a little glue oozage. But that's okay. Take a screenshot if you need to. You also have a photo, right? So see how I've got that attached? So you have your full four layers on the inside. That's all on the outside. We're gonna let that do its thing. And I'm gonna Do this. There we go. And then I'm gonna attach the other one. Make sure I have the right, putting the glue in the right spot. And again, that's what my glue looks like. And I'm kind of, I'll show you what I'm lining up to on the back. There's a straight line on the back of the truck. That's what I'm lining up the back to. Let me give this just a second because it'll slide. So see how I'm trying to line that up with this? Might be a little bit over, but give or take. And so now you can see you've got your full four layer opening there for tucking, your goodies. And then I'll do this, even though I'll be gentle. Oh, that's backwards, but whatever. 
so stinking cute. And it will, yeah, it'll slide right down in there. So see how it fits right in. This is perfectly, these are designed for the ladder to slide right into the hole. See that? I love the truck. Okay, I'm gonna leave this. How am I gonna leave this? It actually should be fine. It's got a good Just not going to touch it. And that's your truck. I hope you love it. Please post pictures. I can't wait to see everybody's colors. I will show you. Oh, let me show you one more thing. So I had a little slide on my truck. See how you can see the maple plywood right here? That means it slid a little bit. So here's my tip. I could sand that down a lot. Um, or, oops, or I could take some stain not a wet brush I want a more dry brush I'm gonna take some early American stain and I'm gonna just right on that's yeah, a little wet but you see how it's gonna go away that's all you do Let that dry and you'll never really see it. You're not gonna really see it from the front that much anyway. But then once that all dries, if you wanna give it just a little bit of extra rough and tumble character, you could take your sanding block and hit your edges. Make sure it's all dry. I'm not gonna do the parts that aren't dry yet. And then you can sand down corners and stuff like that. fun with this. I really love this. I like the rounded edges of it this time. I gave it a little bit extra character and I love that it stands so that you can put it on your desk. You can put it wherever you want. Right now all I'm doing is sanding a little runoff glue. Have a good time. I hope you love it. You guys have fun. Love you guys.